Hi, and welcome to Clear Studies. I am your host, Bishop A. Reginald Littman. Be sure to subscribe so that you won't miss a single episode as it is loaded. I am delighted to welcome you here. Stay tuned. I'll be right back after this. I believe with everything within me that every believer wants to grow in their study of God's word. There's so many obstacles, however, that can present themselves that keep us from really studying like we should. There are time factors. And then sometimes there is just the lack of simplicity when it comes to reading or even being taught the Word of God. That's why I created a platform called Clear Studies. What is Clear Studies? Clear Studies is a platform where you are a part of an e-class. And each week I send you a link to a 15 minute podcast and a 15 minute video. That way, whether you're an auditory or visual learner, you're covered on both ends. The podcast is something that you can download to your device and listen to it when you get ready, when you have time to do so. It may be midnight, it may be three in the morning, it may be during your lunch break. But to accompany the teaching, each week you also will get a colorful PDF handout that is virtually a transcript of the teaching so you won't miss a single word that I have said in the video or in the podcast. But beyond that, it comes with discussion questions that are simple yet provocative that will enable you to think your way through that passage and apply it to your everyday life. It's something that you can share with your family, with your friends. You can even create your own discussion group about each week's lesson. I want you to be a part of my e-class. I want you to grow in the study of God's Word. I don't want you to miss out on what God is doing and on this divine opportunity to grow, to study, and to learn with others. There'll never be an embarrassing moment where you're asking a question in front of the group or where you put on the spot. It's just like it's just me talking to you and then God talking to you while you're studying on your own. If there's ever a question, you can always email me. Why don't you join right now? Clearstudies at gmail.com. Just send an email and say, sign me up and we will add you to the E-class and you can join scores of other people around the nation who are being blessed by these brief but impactful teachings. Be sure to check out my brand new podcast called the Clear Studies Podcast. You'll find a link in the description below. Well, today we continue this portion of the life of Joseph and how he was anointed to be different. In this session, we'll zero in on Genesis 37, verse 5 through 11, the theme of which is the promise of Joseph's life. Again, it is the promise of Joseph's life. Again, our text today is Genesis 37, verse number 5 through 11, and I'm going to share it with you from the Living Bible Translation. And there we will find these words. One night, Joseph had a dream and promptly reported the details to his brothers, causing even deeper hatred. Listen to this, he proudly announced. We were out in the field, binding sheaves, and my sheaf stood up, and your sheaves all gathered around it and bowed low before it. So you want to be our king, do you? His brothers derided. And they hated him both for the dream and for his cocky attitude. Then he had another dream and told it to his brothers. Listen to my latest dream, he boasted. The sun, moon, and 11 stars bowed low before me. This time, he told it to his father as well as his brothers, but his father rebuked him. What is this? He asked. Shall I indeed and your mother and brothers come and bow before you? His brothers were fit to be tied concerning this affair. 
but his father gave it quite a bit of thought and wondered what it all meant. Don't you just love how the living tra translation just kind of breaks it all the way down for us? Well, today we want to talk about the promise of Joseph's life based upon Genesis 37, verse 5 through 11. Now, as trouble was brewing in this family, God was working in the life of young Joseph. But God spoke to Joseph in two particular dreams. And these dreams, God reveals some of his plans for Joseph's life. Let's take a look at the two dreams that Joseph dreamed. Now in verse five through eight, this first dream was of Joseph and his brothers gathering grain in a field. They were cutting wheat and binding it up in sheaves. In the dream, Joseph's sheaf stood up and the sheaves belonging to his brothers bowed down before it. His brothers immediately interpreted the dream to mean that Joseph would one day rule over them and they reacted in absolute anger. They defied the dream and hated Joseph even more than they had before. Now in verse nine through 11, the second dream consisted of the sun, the moon, and 11 stars all bowing down to Joseph. This time, he not only tells his brothers, he also tells his father. Jacob immediately understands the implications of this dream and issues somewhat of a mild rebuke. And when you contrast that to the reaction of the brothers, they were vehemently angry. But Joseph receives a milder rebuke from his father, Jacob. But we are told that he observed that saying. This means that he took heed to it. Jacob is having his choice of Joseph confirmed by a dream from the Lord. And of course, this dream, like the other, caused the rift between Joseph and his brothers to grow even wider. Not only has their father obviously chosen Joseph over them, now God is speaking through Joseph concerning that choice. They see all these things and become increasingly jealous of their brother Joseph. Now it should be noted here that Joseph does not seem to have told his dreams because he wanted to brag or boast, even though the Living Bible sort of leans in that direction. He told them, I believe, because they were so strange that he needed to share them with others to kind of talk through it. I do not detect any impurity in Joseph's motives here. These dreams were the first indications that God had big plans for Joseph. Eventually, they would be fulfilled in their entirety. I would imagine that it was these dreams that sustained Joseph through the pain of the pit, Potiphar's house, and even the prison. And when God gives you a dream, it will carry you despite what you must go through. It was these dreams that reassured that God had a plan for his life and that eventually everything would turn out all right according to God's plans. Now, let me share a few applications with you from this portion of scripture. There is a word here, first of all, about dreams, a word here about dreams. Now, God does not speak primarily through dreams in our days and times. In Joseph's time, let's remember that they did not have a Bible they did not have the first five books, the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They didn't have a complete revelation of God's word. We do. In our day, God speaks to us through his word and through the messengers that he has assigned to our life. That would include our pastor. 
He speaks to us through the Holy Spirit, through men and women of God and through his word. The Bible is superior to all dreams and visions in several ways. First of all, the Bible speaks to many subjects. Dreams are limited in their focus. Secondly, the Bible is far more trustworthy. You see, anyone can read it, but a dream is only known to the person who has the dream. Thirdly, the Bible is absolute authority. Dreams mean nothing. Fourthly, the Bible is certain and it is fixed. Dreams fade and pass with time. So put no faith in the dreams and the visions of the night. Instead, read, study, and build your life upon the word of God. Now, there is also a word here about hope, a word about hope. In his dreams, Joseph received the shadow of a promise from the Lord. He held on to these dreams and they sustained him through some very difficult times. When God births a dream in your heart, let nothing take it away from you. Rest assured that God will always accomplish in your life all those things that please him in his own time frame. There's also a word about hatred. Now, this word about hatred is interesting because when you serve the Lord, when you live clean, when you follow the dream God gives to you, some people are going to rise up against you. Don't be surprised when you are hated for following the Lord. They hated him and they will also hate you. Don't let the haters stop you from achieving your fullest potential in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in the bouquet that formed Jacob's family, there was really only one flower. Joseph was a rose among thorns. Yet like cream, this young man was going to rise to the top and his life would stand out as a testimony of what God can do with a life in spite of the difficulties that would seem to hinder his work and his dream from coming into fruition. Well, maybe God has placed his finger on some area of your life today. Maybe there's a problem in the arena of your purity or some other area of your family. You need to get that to the Lord and get it straightened out right now. When you put it before God, leave it in God's hands like Joseph did. He didn't try to take matters into his own hand, but he just simply lived out his life day by day, trusting God to do what only God can do. That's what you and I must do. Maybe there's jealousy in your heart over the promotions of your coworkers or another family member, like Joseph's brothers were dealing with. You need to get that straightened out and bring that before the Lord and let the Lord purify it everything about your heart. Maybe you're like Joseph's brothers in other ways and you need to be saved from a mindset or saved from an inner thought or even saved in terms of your soul. Maybe life has interfered with your dreams that God has birthed in your heart and you're wondering if they will ever come to pass. Talk to him about that today. Trust what he says. When life gets dark, remember what God told you in the light. Maybe you just want to get in a place of submission to the Father's plan for your life. Maybe you want to surrender to his plan to serve him more faithfully so that he can take and bless and use your life for his glory. Well, I want to pray with you very quickly that God would lead you to trust him to do whatever he said he's going to do. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for my friends who are viewing, who are listening. I pray that you would give us the patience that we need to survive the storms that we must experience on the way to our destiny in you. Thank you for the dreams, the visions, and the goals that you have for our lives. And we put ourselves to the side that you might be glorified. Thank you for what you're gonna do. Forgive us for any impurity, remove any jealousy, remove any animosity so that we can be free to receive 
what you have in store for us. But we know that your word declares, eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard, all of the wonderful things that you have in store for us. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I love sharing these teachings with you. Make sure you're a part of my e-class, clearstudies at gmail.com. I love you. Until next time, peace and stay in the will of God for your life. God bless.